Did you know that over a hundred years ago, a man from Missouri, from the Ozarks, took his wine to the 1873, 1873 Vienna World's Fair, and he won a gold medal for his wine. He won it with these right here, the Norton Grape. Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. I am standing today in a very messy kitchen because as you saw, we are making wine. We just harvested a bunch of grapes. It's harvest season and when harvest season comes, you can't wait, you just gotta go. And so I got the notice the other day that the grapes were in, the machines were about to harvest everything, so you better go and you better go now. And so uh, I quickly put the word out on Facebook and we had a number of uh, local friends and families who decided they wanted to come along, they could drop everything and come along, a lot of homeschoolers, uh, so they have that ability to go ahead and just drop everything uh, when it comes time to harvest. And we are in the harvest season right now, and so we all went out to a local vineyard. It's about 90 acres, has a huge variety of all kinds of grapes. Uh, they have Concord, they have Muscat, they have uh, what we harvested today, which was the Norton Cynthiana variety. Uh, just a whole different type of types of grapes and uh, I wanted to pick a different grape this year we'll talk about that in a minute but it was the time to go out and get some grapes and so we got our grapes and now I'm putting those into carboys and going ahead and, and crushing those grapes I'm gonna make wine a lot of the families enjoy making just jams and jellies and we had a number of those families who came out with us who got home and got right to work and they got their jams and jellies already posted on Facebook uh, showing off their hard work and getting those things into the pantry so that they can enjoy them throughout the coming year. So uh, what we're doing with ours is we don't eat a lot of jam actually around here. Um, you know, sometimes we'll get gifted to us and the kids will eat it, um, but we don't really eat a lot of jam and jellies for some reason, never really have. And uh, so we're taking mine, and I'm going into a carboy. They're going into a carboy right here, and uh, we're gonna make wine out of ours. But before we get started, you know I like talking about home businesses, right? American home business, homestead businesses. And I have another one for you today. It's called clearwatervalleyfarms.com. Clearwatervalleyfarms.com, and they sent me a seed pack that we're gonna be giving out to you guys. So here's how this is gonna work. I have three seed packs. Fall planting is going on right now. And then also you need to start thinking about your spring planting. Uh, people usually start thinking about the seeds they're gonna be planting next spring right now. And so I know, listen, I have talked about Baker Creek uh, seeds a lot in the past and I love Baker Creek. We love Baker Creek and we use them uh, for the majority of our gardens. But there's other great home-based uh, businesses out there that sell seeds that you should also look at just for variety sake, if nothing else. So check out, it's clearwatervalleyfarms.com. They're based up in Idaho. And they, if you're northern, because see, you know, Baker Creek covers a lot of us guys down here in the south, okay? Because they're in the Ozarks, basically. But if you want to uh, find a company that's more up north, they may have seeds that are gonna do a lot better up north for sure, and some even down south, check out clearwatervalleyfarms.com. We're gonna be giving away an elderberry syrup kit from them, and also an urban pack seed kit and a regular seed pack kit. And so these, thring, these things are gonna be given out this week. What you need to do to register to win these products is to go to clearwatervalleyfarms.com, sign up for their newsletter, and I'm gonna pick three emails, three emails from that sign up to give these packs to. Now, even if you don't win, <laughs> you still get 25% off your first order. 25% off your first order, that's a, that's a lot. It's a big discount. So check it out, clearwatervalleyfarms.com, link in the description below, link, uh, the, the address is on your screen, sign up for their newsletter, they won't spam you, they won't sell your information, okay, this is a home-based business, home-based business, and they're not giving me anything to promote their products, okay, I just like promoting home-based businesses, homestead products, and this is it right here. They have seed packs, they have elderberry syrup kits for sale, check them out, Clear Valley, was it clearwatervalleyfarms.com, 25% off your first order. I'm gonna give these away this week. 
So sign up right now, right now. Go to that website, sign up for their newsletter. Okay, on to the wine. So today we're making wine with the Norton grape, otherwise called the Cynthiana. And it kind of depends where you're from. You know how like up in Minnesota, people call soda pop? And like down south, they call it soda. Well, it's like the same thing. Norton, Cynthiana, they have different names for this grape. It's a small variety of grape. You can tell it's not very big um, compared to other grapes like the Concord. But this grape, the Norton, or otherwise called the Cynthiana grape, has won medals uh, a long, started winning medals a long time ago, all the way back in Vienna, 1873. And this guy from Missouri, he was from Herman, Missouri, which there are a lot of wineries in that area now today. He won that gold medal from that year's World's Fair. Amazing. This produces an amazingly fantastic dry wine. I recently picked up some of these bottles from St. James Winery there in St. James, Missouri, uh, just off Highway 44, and these are grown with the Norton grape. This is an amazing wine. Uh, I really liked it. In fact, it's one of my favorites now uh, for a dry wine. Uh, just fantastic. I'm really hoping that mine turned out about half as good as that. Now, I know a lot of you guys are like, Zach, I just can't drink dry wines. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how you appreciate that. It just does not taste good to me. Well, here's how. I'm going to give you the secret right now. Here's how you enjoy a dry wine. Here's how you change and alter your palate so that you can enjoy a really dry wine like this one here. And this is not expensive. This is actually, I don't spend a lot of, I try not to spend a lot of money on my bottles of wine, okay? $10, $12 usually tops. I think this was about $18 a bottle. Um, if I'm not mistaken, which is outside my price range usually for a bottle of wine. Um, I don't normally do that, but this was really good. And I, I use these only for special occasions. And here's what I mean by that. If you really want to enjoy a good bottle of dry wine, here's how you adjust your palate. Do you like steak? Do you like a good, ni a nice, juicy steak? Okay, you want to make your steak like a, like a, a, a ribeye, or a porterhouse steak, or a filet mignon. You wanna make this however you like your steak, okay? However you really best enjoy your steak. Take a bite of the steak, okay? How you like it best, and then what you do is you take a sip of the wine. So your mouth is full of those savory juices, those salty juices, and you're swallowing that, and then you take a sip of your wine, and that wine, that dry wine, will be completely different experience. Will be a completely different experience for you. It will make that wine come alive in your mouth. It's meant to be enjoyed with something savory, something, a red meat that's savory, a savory dish or a, a savory red pasta. See, that's why you, you begin to learn that certain wines pair better with certain foods. And, and for those of you who can't really stomach the taste of a dry wine. Normally someone's handed you a dry wine to taste one day and you didn't have anything savory in your mouth beforehand and you just took a sip of that and you were like, Ugh, that's just not good. That's not good. Well, if you put something savory in your mouth first and then take a sip of the wine, it's a completely new experience. So when me and Jamie first got married, she didn't know that. Uh, she didn't like dry wines. <laughs> and we did this with her. I, I gave her, we, we had steak one night and then she took a sip of that wine. It was a completely different experience. Completely different. And now, you know, towards the end of her life, she wouldn't drink sweet wines ever. She hated sweet. She turned her nose up at sweet wines where she normally, that was her first go-to. But now it's all about the dry wines. So that, if you're interested, this is how you can learn to appreciate a dry wine. So I have six five gallon buckets of these Norton Cynthiana variety grapes that we picked at the vineyard the other day and uh, they turned out fantastic. So what it's gonna take about three buckets for one carboy of wine, okay? And I still had to top it off with some uh, extra grape juice that I bought from the store. So I just bought a Welch's grape juice and I topped off the carboy with that. So we took three buckets of the Cynthiana, we crushed them, and then we put them into this carboy here, right here. And it's just now starting to ferment. It's just now starting, I just pitched the yeast a little bit, and if you can see right there, it's moving in the airlock. See it, it's gonna bubble, there it goes. All right, it's just getting started. I just pitched that yeast in there, and it's just about full. So what I will do, this is gonna sit for probably two or three months, 
And then after about two months or so, I'll rack this and I'll just keep racking this six gallon carboy uh, until, uh, you know, there's a lot less debris that's in there. You can see all of the soft salads that are in there. And it's going to take a while for all that to settle. And it'll settle about this much, but I have a filter, so I won't lose any juice out of this. I have a filter for my, for my racking, and I'll get all that juice out of there. And it'll be clear by the time it's all finished. It'll be, it'll be a great, uh, great experiment. I'm looking forward to getting my first Norton in the bottle. But it's going to take about a year before it's all done. So I've got three more buckets of these bad boys that have to be crushed. Here's how I'm going to do it. This is my Omega Juicer. And it does a fantastic job. What comes out of the end here is completely dry and void of juices. So it works really well. Uh, and it gets a lot of juice. However, it gets a lot of soft salads as well, too. So I do kind of filter that with a strainer. Um, but still, you get a lot of soft salads that come into their carboy. Anyway, uh, this is how I crush my grapes. I basically throw them in here. Um, I have a hopper that's detached right now, but a uh, hopper goes onto here. I, I shove them down in there, and then I ramrod them home, and out comes my juice. And the juice goes into this container right here, and I heat this to about 170 degrees over the, on the oven, on the stove. And then, uh, then this goes into uh, the carboy, which is clean right there. And so that carboy will be the next six gallons that gets filled up from these three buckets. And then if I need to, which I probably will, I will top it off with some red grapes, uh, Welch's grape juice, just to fill up some space in there. But yeah, there we go. Uh, Welch's red grape grape juice. Listen guys, I have done a lot of wine videos in the past on different things. This is my first time doing the Norton Cynthiana variety. Uh, I love wine. I, I love the taste of it. I love tasting new, having new taste experiences. Uh, I'm a foodie. I always have been, and I really enjoy uh, making things with my hands also. And then getting to make my own wine is just a dream come true out here. And the fact that we live so close to a, wine, uh, to a vineyard allows me to do that. Plus, I get to harvest other fruits and try different things as well. But Zach, I've tried making wine, and it doesn't turn out very well. Well, one of the reasons probably that's happening is you don't have the right equipment. I can't tell you how many people who tell me, well, they just throw it in a five gallon plastic container and they put a balloon on top or something silly like that. And they think that that's going to farm it. No, that's going to turn out horrible. Your wine will not be drinkable. Guys, really, wine is a testimony of patience. Patience. You must take your time and you must have the right equipment. And you must be clean. Everything must be clean. Every bit of my equipment gets soaked in boiling water before I use it. That way there's no germs in there. And I use the right equipment. These little bubble airlocks right here, they cost like $1.50 on Amazon. Don't use a balloon. Use a bubble airlock and you're going to get a much better product at the end of the day. Uh, just spend the $1.50. Good grief, people. And get the carboys. I know they are expensive. I think the cheapest one you can find online for a six gallon carboy is going to be about 50 bucks. Um, so yeah, it's a little, it's, it's a little pricey, 50 bucks for a carboy, but you know, you add a few of these, you know, you buy one. Okay. And then buy a plastic container. You can rack it in the container, then rack it back into the carboy, but you buy one. The next year you buy it, maybe buy another and you buy another. And then after a couple of years, you've got a lot of equipment. And you buy a couple different hoses for racking purposes. And, and you buy the right kind of yeast. Don't use bread yeast. You can use bread yeast, but it's not going to give the best flavor. They have yeast that are formulated specifically for wine so that you can make a really good, enjoyable wine. So just go out there, learn the ropes, learn some of the equipment, spend the money to get the right equipment, and you will produce a better product. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to leave a comment below. I want you to tell me if you like dry wines or not. Let me know if you hate dry wines. I need to know that. And but here's the deal. If you don't like the dry wines and you can't if you don't if you it's just something you don't enjoy, I want you to be honest with me. And I want you to tell me if you've ever done my experiment. Have you ever actually had something savory like a nice steak? If you're not into steak, something else that's savory, maybe like a nice savory salad. Something salty and savory and then try the dry wine. Have you ever tried that experiment? Be honest with me. Leave a comment below. Let me know. I need to know that. Before you go, make sure you hit that like button, okay? D don't leave without hitting that like button first. Leave that comment below. Let me know if it's a sweet or, or dry wine for you. And then also, check out clearwatervalleyfarms.com. I'm giving those seed packs away very soon, probably before next Wednesday, okay? So you got a full week to put in your name. 
put in your email address over at clearwatervalleyfarms.com. And then even if you don't win one of the seed packs, you get 25% off your first order. It now is a great time right now to start thinking about the seeds you're gonna be planting next spring. So we're here doing it, homesteading, because it's not illegal yet. Enjoy your winemaking. Mmm. Mmm. That's good stuff. Mmm. Mmm. Hey guys, I'm happy to introduce an American homestead sponsor, Zervita Zeal. Now, first off, I only accept sponsors from products that I use and believe in. My family uses Zeal mainly because we want to ensure a healthy immune system. You see, it's made up of only whole food concentrates and includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. The included sweetener is all natural from fruit and the stevia leaf. It's gluten-free, it's vegan, and it's kosher. In 2018, my youngest son was involved in a bike accident that resulted in the surgical removal of his spleen, and that's an important part of his immune system. And because we live on a farm, you can guess that having a healthy immune system for our family is very important. Some of the included ingredients are beetroot, chicory root, turmeric, moringa, blueberries, cranberry, goji berry, milk thistle, ginseng, alfalfa, broccoli, and so much more. It's these natural ingredients that can easily be made into a powerful and tasty drink that my family can make and feel good about. So sign up and give it a try today. Every purchase you make goes to help the homestead so that we can continue to make great homesteading videos for you. Link is in the description below. Go ahead, give it a try. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. I'll wait. <laughs>